Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. So my name is Michael Shalov. I'm heading products for mobile and cloud security here at Checkpoint. And today we're going to do something quite interesting in the next 20 minutes. Uh, we're going to do something that uh, I guess you guys all uh, read about, heard about, but potentially you've never seen that. We're going to do a, a hack of a mobile device and see why it's so important to actually secure those devices in order to protect your, your enterprise, your business from cyber, as cyber criminals. So let's start with the sort of setup for, for our story. And uh, basically, we are talking about probably the, one of the biggest issues that we uh, as cybersecurity professionals deal with today. It's not ransomware. It's actually something else. Uh, it's business email compromise. So business email compromise uh, actually cost uh, businesses more than $3.1 billion, according to, to a report published by FBI, over the last three years. So it's a pretty significant number. And business email compromise, BC, which is also known as whaling attacks, so similar to spear phishing, but whaling, is an attack where cyber criminals are actually uh, able to penetrate and hack the email accounts of your executives. Specifically, they usually go for the CEO or the CFO. The reason that they do so is because they're looking for people that have the ability to do or instruct wire transfers, to basically tell someone in the company to issue a, a transfer of funds to a different account. And clearly what they're actually able to do is that they learn how the, the that executive actually communicates with the finance department or with the accounting department, and then they're able to mimic those emails and basically trick those guys to wire money to, the, to an account that is in the possession of the hackers. Now, while it sounds like you know, very complicated, I would like to show you how that is being done and how it's actually being done through the mobile device, which will be our backdoor to conduct this, uh, this hack. So where do we start? We start with a website uh, that I guess you all very well familiar with, LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn, it's quite trivial to go and search for a CFO of a certain company. In this, care, in this case, it's sort of a fictional company called Pharmacara, healthcare provider. And once you search the CFO for Pharmacara, you get a couple of entries. The first entry is a gentleman named Martin McClellan. He's, he's the SVP and CFO of Pharmacara, one of its divisions. And you know, for me, it looks like a, a legit target, probably a guy that can instruct wire transfer, has access to the accounting systems, and we're going to try to go after that guy. Now, the next piece in the puzzle that we need to have is something that you guys are all willing to give strangers, people that you barely know, your business card. So, the business card has particularly two really interesting uh, items. One is your phone number and the linked email address that you have. And, and you can agree with me that those are really trivial um, details that you can figure out about almost any individual with a little bit of search. So the next thing that we're going to do, as Pharmacara recently moved to a, a cloud email service provider, we're going to try and get to the account of, of Martin. Now, what I'm actually going to show you right now is not a vulnerability in the cloud service. Okay? It, it will work on any cloud service. I'm going to demonstrate it on the most popular and well-known cloud service, clearly Office 365. But it will work on any other cloud service that you would provide, whether it's Gmail, uh, Google Apps, or you know, any, any other provider that you're actually interested in. So let's start with, uh, with the actual uh, demonstration. Basically, the first thing that we need to do is um, we need to go to the logging page of, uh, Office, of uh, Office 365. And we will try to reset the password for Martin. So we don't, we don't really know his password, right? So we, we really need to figure out a way to get in. So we try to reset his password. There is a capture over here. And the next thing that we're going to select is basically we will try to issue a second factor uh, authentication or, uh, with a SMS, a text message. Now remember that we know his phone number, right? Because we had it on the business card. A phone number which basically is, uh, ends with two zero. And now what we're actually going to do, and this is the, probably the most important part, before we issue the text, the, the, the authentication, 
we're going to do an SS7 attack on his phone number and basically try to intercept any SMS message that is being sent to that phone. So now we, we issue the verification and here we go. We basically were able to intercept the SMS message. Now remember, the only thing that we need to know is his phone number. That's the only, th the only thing that is important to us. And now we can basically reset his password And, you know, I guess that from this point is quite trivial, right? <laughs> now, again, this, this attack, if you guys have read in the news, was actually issued against uh, German banks two weeks ago to steal uh, money from uh, bank accounts. And it's the same, uh, the same trick, but, you know, for it's basically an enterprise use case. So we are now in his email. And um, you know, we we would probably try to search for wire transfers. And we see that he's basically there is a lady named um, uh, Marina that uh, he's uh, is basically sending her an email. We need to quickly process a wire transfer of three uh, three uh, three hundred twenty thousand US dollars. Marina is the senior accounting, so she's probably the right lady to <coughs> to, to fish. From clearly from his email address, so we'll um, we'll send her an email. Urgent wire transfer. You know, actually prepared something which looks quite uh, sophisticated, a confidential transaction that she needs to issue without uh, telling anyone. We need to quickly process a wire transfer of four hundred thousand US dollars to the attached account information. So let's put our account information in that email. And. We'll send it to Marina. I guess that's the time that you need to say chiching, right? Because we, in a couple of hours, <laughs> we'll be going to get this money. Now, as we're already in his uh, account, we can actually see that this guy is going to CPX. He's going to a conference, and there is also quite an interesting email over here from his CEO, basically telling him, "Hey, Martin, we need to discuss face to face about some aspect for the upcoming quarterly results." Now, hackers really like quarterly results. If we, if a, m a minute ago we were able to transfer 400,000 US, do US dollars, now we're talking about big money. So two years ago, hackers were able to uh, steal over 100 million dollars uh, using inside information that they had about companies uh, before they published their quarterly results. So they actually were able to take very aggressive positions on the stock market and basically manipulate the stock based on that inside information. Now, clearly, those guys are going to talk face to face, right? So none of this information is going to be documented. There is no way to sort of do get it through sort of traditional hacking, right? We cannot get it through, through emails. But we know that Martin is going to a conference. And usually, when people go to a conference, they tend to download the app of the conference. How many of you here downloaded the conference app for Checkpoint, for CPX? Quite a few of you. So. Um, <laughs> in order, in order to, to do the next step in the hack, I'll use something which is uh, quite a sophisticated tool. How many of you have heard about the QR code exploit kit? QR code exploit kit. Okay, quite a few people raised their head. And um, QR code exploit kit is a very sophisticated tool, very expensive. You can actually buy it in Office Depot. It's a piece of paper and a duct tape. And um, what you usually do, like the way that you use it, you, you take the duct tape and you go, to the, you go to the signs that you would have, you know, like in the entrance where people actually scan the barcode and uh, try to download the app and you basically stick it over there. Now, like super simple, clearly uh, social engineering trick. And what I have here is, um, is an iPhone want to show you the screen of the iPhone running uh, the latest uh, running the latest iOS version you can see it here on the screen and assuming that I'm Martin I'm going to scan uh, scan the QR code and immediately what pops up is a message if I would like to install this conference application um, assuming that I will press install, 
basically what will happen is that I will download a, a conference app that looks like a legit conference app. Clearly, in this case, this is a malware, right? Um, but you know, it's legit. It's on an iPhone, fresh new iPhone. It's actually sideloaded to the device. Now, even if the screen is off, right, and it's in the pocket of uh, of Martin. The next thing that we can do, actually, is um, we have the command and control here for the, for the malware. So we can do basically two quite interesting attacks. The first attack is actually to re retrieve all the information on the phone, including contact lists, calendar records, uh, properties of the device. And in this information is actually being sent to our uh, command and control, which is just a Gmail address, right? So you can see here clearly the contact list. Um, GP GPS coordinates, so we, we can see where he is. Um, as you will agree, this is the proper location, right? <laughs> Pretty good signal for GPS indoor. And, um, and then we also have all his calendar records, right? So we can see here that at 7 p.m., he has a meeting with Daryl in the COF office. So we can track his location. We know when he has the meeting. We can see that he's actually entering to the CEO office. And simultaneously, we can actually trigger a recording from the device. So while the screen is right now off, it, it, the phone can be in his pocket. Now, probably most of you, when you go, when you enter uh, um, meetings, you just you know throw your phone on the on the table. Usually, you have like you know in big meetings, you have like ten ten phones <laughs> on the table. And uh, that can be actually used to record the meeting, right? Without uh, Martin or anyone else uh, be able to to understand what's going on. I just got the recording file. Is right now off. It can, it, the phone can be in his pocket. You know, probably most of you when you go when you enter a, a meeting, you just you know throw your phone on the on the table. It's quite a lot of echo <laughs> from. Okay, so I think uh, you guys got the point, right? <laughs> so that's that's basically the, the spectrum of things that we can uh, we can do. Just to to recap on that, clearly, from uh, if you sort of look on the risks, right, or the damages, there is quite a substantial spectrum, right? They can you leverage the device to break into your corporate network, even if you specifically if you're using VPN, that can be manipulated to get the access. Um, if you are uh, if you're allowing it on your corporate Wi-Fi, it can be used as sort of the, the proxy into your, into your organization. Um, clearly, passwords can be compromised. This is one of the th those things that we've seen in the Gulligan attack, that basically the hackers were able to steal over 1.3 million accounts from mobile devices, from Android devices. And within those 1.3 million accounts, Something quite interesting, we didn't publish it in the news, there were 800 corporate accounts. So basically the hackers had access to 800 corporations within those accounts that they were able to retrieve. Uh, not only that, not only sort of like the, 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 the traditional assets can be compromised, but also the fact that the mobile device is packed with all those sensors, it allows hackers to uh, track the location of the employee, basically t capture all the photos, and last but not least, basically, they can record meetings, right? So this re really, really impressive um, reco recording or, or eavesdropping on meetings. So if you guys are asking yourself, what is the probability that you already have this problem? The answer for that is probably 100%, OK? This statistics comes from uh, our customers that have deployed our a mobile threat uh, defense solution, Samblast Mobile. We have over 850 customers, and we looked at the customers that deployed over 500 devices. So I would actually say that it sort of uh, ref that re it reflects any almost any typical organization. Now within those customers, 100% of them, when they deployed our solution, we already found mobile malware on their devices. And the average number of Android malware, or sorry, on malware in general on those devices was 54. 54, an average number of, uh, of malware in an organization on mobile devices. And I think you'll all agree with me that it's a pretty substantial number because it's enough for only one device to be compromised, as we've seen previously, for, to let the hackers get into your enterprise. Now, if you think that you guys have MDM and it sort of covers you, 
even sort of the basic things, right? 74% of those customers, they had at least one jailbreaked, jailbroken or rooted device with an average of 34 devices per company, right? So even those things were missed. And um, once they deployed our solution, we actually were able to prevent, to detect and prevent a uh, man in the middle attack on more than 89% of those customers. So it's not, Mobile attacks are not just the demo that I've just done, right? It's, it's reality. It's something that you, you guys are experiencing on a daily basis in your network. And potentially, if you are not familiar with those numbers, it's just because you guys don't have the visibility. So what do you guys can do about it? Uh, basically, with the launch of the uh, Infinity architecture, we have also evolve our mobile security offering, our mobile threat prevention product to Sandblast Mobile, basically joining our advanced technology for protecting mobile devices from zero-day attacks, joining it to our overall Sandblast family, and basically sharing the threat intelligence and, uh, and management across all of those uh, solutions. So we are now really able to help you to secure all the platforms in your organization, from network to cloud to PCs to, to mobile. Now, in a nutshell, what does a Sandblast Mobile do? Basically, it allows you a full threat management lifecycle for mobile devices, iOS and Android. First, we are able to detect using advanced algorithms any compromise of the device and mitigate the impact of that on the device and the corporate assets that are delivered on the device. In addition, we have the best catch rate in the industry. It was actually validated by a third party um, assessment company. That, uh, and, and also, you know, clearly we, we have a lot of results that back that, uh, that uh, interesting figures. We also provide you the, a, a pretty um, interesting visibility to understand what is your risk profile on mobile devices. And uh, last but not least, which is extremely important, it's a really simple deployment. We integrate with all the leading MDM solutions in the market, and the user experience is fantastic. We don't consume any battery from the mobile device, so you really can deploy it on hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands of mobile devices in your organi organization in a seamless way, and you can secure your infrastructure. Now with that, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.